Hi, I'm Eric Swartz, WA6HHQ with Ellacraft. For those of you new to Ellacraft, we started the company over 20 years ago. Wayne Burdick, N6KR, and myself um, were two Silicon Valley guys uh, who had had long careers there and were ready to do something different. And we did something really crazy and started a ham radio company. But here we are more than 20 years later, certainly one of the uh, leading companies in the industry. And we've had a great time doing a whole range of products, everything from small radios, of course, the 100 watt radios like the K4, the predecessor, the K3, and of course, our larger amplifiers like the KPA 1500. We really target the higher performance, high end of the market, either in the smaller radios or in the bigger ones. Um, they're lower cost than the radios, but they still pack a lot of performance on the KX2 and the KX3, for instance. And the K4, of course, is a high end, high performance radio that we hope you can have certainly for a very long time because it's also upgradable. That can be a first radio for some people, and that's true for all of our radios. Uh, they, they sort of like are peeling an onion. They start out and you can use it with just the standard front panel buttons and use it very simply and get on the air and have a great time. And then as you peel it back, you find all these neat features we put in here that you can then learn about and add to your, your tools as you get on the air. So our goal is really to come out with products that appeal to a broad range of amateur radio operators that are both new operators, old experienced operators, people that are technical, less technical, and really people that just love either you know operating for fun, grag chewing, contesting, DXing, you name it. Uh, our goal is always to give you as much performance in, in terms of high technology features and really excellent receiver performance, excellent transmit quality um, in both our simple radios and the more complex radios like the K4. I'm here today to talk about the latest features on our K4 direct sampling 160 through 6 meter software defined transceiver. The K4 covers 160 through 6 meters, all modes at 100 watts. The K4 also has two receivers in all the versions of the radio that we make that can listen to two frequencies simultaneously. And also we have dual pan adapters that can also display the actual data coming on the screen for spectral data that uh, is happening on both those receive frequencies. We also can drive both the internal monitor here, which is a seven inch touch screen. And I happen to have two uh, displays going right now. I could even have just one. So I can have VFOA and VFOB like I have right now. Happen to have 20 meter sideband and um, 40 meter CW showing. And then also I can drive an external monitor. Happen to be showing just 20 meter sideband on this one. Uh, we can also mirror this main screen up here or have a completely independent display like I'm showing right now. So you get sort of the ultimate flexibility between the two. Basically, we can drive any HDMI monitor up to most 4K monitors. Um, in this case, this is a uh, HD, um, I think 1920 by 1080 flat screen, uh, third party that I got uh, actually on amazon.com. And this also has touchscreen input, so it'll take a USB output from this into the USB port on the back of the K4. So you can actually do touchscreen on the external monitor. Like for instance, here I can tune different frequencies by just touching or dragging. Um, or on the internal monitor, of course, same way. The K4 has a modular and upgradable architecture. Uh, you can basically start with the K4 basic unit, which has a single analog to digital converter. We can listen to two frequencies on the same band, off the same antenna, or actually even on different bands um, off the, a single antenna if it's a multi-band antenna. Also, um, you can upgrade to the K4D um, that comes with two analog to digital converters, which can come off of two different antennas simultaneously. That adds the capability, of course, listening with optimized antennas for each band um, on each of the two different frequencies, um, and also doing diversity reception, where you're actually using two antennas on the same band coming in through two A to D converters and two bandpass filters and so on, down to the digital portion of the receive chain. Um, and that lets you basically, uh, as one antenna might fade and the other one fades di at a different time because they're at different altitudes or just different physical locations on your property, actually gives you more capability of listening to weak signals as the bands are fading up and down. Then the K4HD adds um, a additional superhead front end to the radio for even additional dynamic range on receive in extreme cases, typically de-expeditions or uh, very close operation in close proximity, usually within hundreds of yards of each other. And that, though in most cases um, you don't need that, but uh, even in case of those close operations, we give that for people in the extreme cases. Each one of those can be bought as a radio standard, or you can upgrade from one radio to the next over time. 
One other important feature of the K4 is our wide matching range automatic antenna tuner option. This is a plug-in card for the K4. Most of the radios go out with it. Um, you can certainly upgrade to it if you didn't get it initially. It can match just like our other auto tuners in the K3, the KX2, of course in our large amplifiers. It can match about a 10 to 1 impedance uh, ratio um, going from 80 through 10 meters and about 5 to 1 on 160 and on 6. But in addition to being just a ATU, it also has the capability of adding to the number of receive antennas you can select in the radio. We can take uh, the, K, uh, the CAT4 auto tuner adds actually uh, two more antenna inputs and outputs for transmit and receive versus the single one in the basic uh, and radio without the auto tuner. In addition, you've got two more inputs that can go through a receive matrix that it controls. Um, so you can pick basically one of five sources on each band for your receive paths on either receiver. They can be shared between the two receivers or be independent. So you really pick up an antenna switching matrix and also, of course, the very wide range of antenna switching and, of course, the extra transmit antennas, too, for three transmit antennas with the CAT4 installed. The K4 also offers a wide range of I.O., both digital and analog, um, for talking to the radio. We've got multiple USB-A ports where you can plug in keyboards, USB mouses like I have here, and other devices like our K-Pod external uh, VFO knob. This actually has function keys that you can program and also an external VFO that can be connected to VFO-A, VFO-B, or RAT. You can actually have multiples. Beyond that, we've also got a USB-B jack, which has both uh, digital control, like COM port, but over USB, uh, for controlling the radio with logging programs and remote control. And also it has a built-in sound card. So you can do a single cable you can plug into your external computer for logging or for digital mode programs like FT8, PSK31, etc. In addition, I mentioned already the HDMI output, and we also have the line-in, line-out physical audio lines if you want to take regular analog in and out of the radio too. A couple of things we focused on in the K4 design was both continuing our super high performance CW performance like we've had in our other radios. We've actually made additional improvements in that area, both with receive filters, transmit TR time, and so on on CW. But also in voice we, and, and, and CW on receive, we've got very low distortion receive, which in the middle of a contest or chasing DX, the fatigue factor certainly drops quite a bit. This sounds better overall. And of course on transmit, we're also able to do very clean transmit audio, both on regular sideband and on ESSB expanded sideband. So you really can go all the way up to close to five kilohertz in ESSB mode. Um, and also of course in AM now, we're adding in our next software release, the ability to also get even closer to five kilohertz. I think it is five kilohertz in audio bandwidth now. So that's a super, really nice clean sound on the radio. And lastly, in our basic features on the radio, we also include a built-in reference in the radio that can be locked to an external 10 megahertz reference too if you want absolute um, down to the fraction of a hertz accuracy with a GPS-based reference and so on. Next, I'm going to talk about some new features that are coming out in our next firmware release for the K4, probably in version R29. Most desired ones that we've been asked for in, over the years is the ability to improve our speech processing using controlled envelope single sideband. We've now added that to the K4, and what this does is allows us to run much higher levels of compression with moderately low distortion, hardly any in some cases, without the typical overshoot that you see with most compression modes and, and also most fast ALC and radios. The end result is, is we can increase the overall talk power significantly, not just a fraction of a dB, we're talking two, three, four dB or more in some cases, um, and actually give you very intelligible, well compressed and high average, much higher average power through the system. And we've got that really done all in our DSP chip, which made it possible. And it's just amazing how well it works. We have one of our engineers actually lives um, up north of here and simple wire antennas operating 100 watts with a K4. And his comment was, is that before he, we started using this, he could make contacts, you know, when the bands are open, say on 20 meters, occasionally over to Europe and so on on sideband, but not really a great number of contacts. The minute we gave this to him, it was like he had an amplifier. So what I'd like to do is demonstrate that here. And what I'm going to do is I've got my microphone hooked up here and I'm actually going to transmit into a dummy load with the compression. Um, we actually are recording it also so you can hear what it sounds like as I turn up the uh, compression on the radio. And we're going to show you on here on this uh, P3 monitor and the, the TX monitor that we have for it, the transmit envelope on the radio. So you can see what changes as I increase the compression on the radio with controlled envelope single sideband. And as I turn up compression, you'll see it get more and more filled out as the lower portions of my voice 
uh, get amplified up in the middle of those transmissions. And you'll also be able to hear it um, on the recording here at the same time, so you can hear what the compression sounds like. Of course, over the internet it might sound a little bit different, but I think it'd be pretty good quality, so you can get a feel for what the compression uh, sounds like on the air also, and get that average talk power increase. So I'm gonna grab the microphone here. I've got it set for Vox, so I can just hold it and start talking. You're gonna start seeing my voice here. This is with compression turned off. And if you're looking over here in the P3, you'll see I'm hitting peak uh, up close to full power on the screen, uh, on the peaks of my voice. But as you notice, there's a lot of, lot of troughs inside. And actually, even in any single tone, like if I say, eh, or ah, especially ah, hello, hello, you can see it's sort of triangular shape where my voice actually, even though the peaks are up there at close to 100 watts, large portions of the actual tone that I'm making are quite a bit less than that, you know, down many dB from it. So what you'll see as I turn compression up is this will actually get more and more filled out, and you'll see what it both hears, it sounds like as I'm talking into it here, and then also what, uh, what it looks like on the monitor. So right now compression is set to zero. I'm going to start turning it up. I've just turned compression on a little bit. It's down at one. Then we'll bring it up to about 10, which is a nice uh, sort of moderate level. And if you notice, I'm starting to fill out now. Uh, hello, all of a sudden, hello, all of a sudden, these were more filled out than they were before. Hello. Just to give you a reference, I'll go back to zero. So hello with it on. And go back here. Hello. You see it's a lot less. You can see it dipping down there in that sort of triangle shape. Go back up to a compression of 10, which is relatively light. Hello. Much more. You go to 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, hello, 1, 2. Now you're seeing significant, hello, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1. You still get those uh, periodic dips. That's more due to very low-frequency components of my voice. Um, it resonates in there. But if you take a look at the overall envelope, a uh, vastly higher amount of average energy. And actually, if you're looking at it on an average uh, reading watt meter, you'll read a higher average power as a result of this. So... Peaks, of course, stay the same. They don't go any higher. One of the beauties of controlled envelope single sideband, which, by the way, was created by um, Dave Hershberger, W9GR. He's the uh, actual creator and author of the algorithm for controlled envelope single sideband. It's really been wonderful to uh, have this in the radio and, and get it out there. But uh, it, uh, it really makes a huge difference in the overall intelligibility of your signal, especially when conditions are weak. Uh, you can turn it all the way off if you're 30 over 9 and... and Stuff. But if you if you are basically a weak signal chasing DX or in a contest, that can make a huge difference to you. So going up in compression further from 15, which is sort of where I would probably run mine most of the time, um, you can go up further 20, going up to uh, getting close to 25 and 30 here. Of course, this is maximum. You'll probably hear some compression artifacts, but nowhere near what you would hear even with our past compression if it was turned up to this level, um, in which this actually has a higher Overall average tox power, certainly over the prior compression, our radio and many radios out there that don't have controlled envelope single sideband, uh, it, uh, it just makes a huge difference. And I'll go back down to more moderate level now, and there you go. So that gives you a feel for what uh, DESSB, controlled envelope single sideband. Not to be confused with ESSB, which is extended bandwidth single sideband for a broader bandwidth up to about five kilohertz. That's what our compression looks like with this. Uh, we are just releasing that in the release 29 coming out here of our firmware for the radio. Uh, so stay tuned when that gets out. That'll be a pretty cool feature for you to use. The R29 package also includes sharper CW filters from 200 hertz and on down. Um, what we have done is added actually the ability to cascade what we call IIR filters, fairly uh, simple ones in the sense that they don't have a ton of ringing, but enough that they sharpen up the skirts on the filter over the, I the FIR filters that we had in there before. Actually, the two are cascaded with each other. And as a result, for 200 hertz and on down, we now have sharper skirts available. Now, these are defaulted on on the radio. But if you still like what we had before better, you can turn that off in the menu, and I'll show you that right now. But the bottom line is, you now have the option for even more adjacent signal rejection at those narrow bandwidths. So when I go over to the menu, basically I'm going to bring up the menu here. So the Receive CWIIR filters, which default on in the system, can be turned off if you like it. And you can go over here in the menu and take that option, unlock it turn it off, and that goes back to a little bit broader skirts for 200 hertz and below. So we wanted to help the guys that were getting a lot of QRM and wanted to be able to knock it out, but for the real high-speed CW operators, they might prefer with them off too. So it's a nice trade-off for you to be able to select yourself. We're also adding a new feature that adds additional 
uh, bandwidth filtering in front of the noise planker on the receiver. So this can improve performance of the noise planker in situations where you have nearby signals, which would sort of pump the threshold of the noise planker, causing it to blank on those strong signals. And of course, it cause distortion to the signal you're listening to versus just letting it blank on the interfering pulse noise that you're trying to get rid of. So when that's turned on, you can turn it on in narrow mode where it puts a filter in front of the noise blanker, just the noise blanker itself, um, that will track your receive bandwidth down to about a kilohertz. It won't go any narrower than that. But that gives it a little bit of a, a variable range that you can adjust with your receive bandwidth. Uh, you can set it to wide, which is a five kilohertz bandwidth fixed in front of it. And also uh, you can turn it off, which has a full bandwidth of 24 kilohertz in front of the noise blanker, uh, which is a bit wider but uh, you can play between all of those. Um, off is similar to what we have right now going into it. Uh, so the net result is um, you can pick now what works best for your situation. Um, and the way you actually access those is by going into the noise blanker adjust menu, typically by pushing the noise blanker button and holding it. And I'll do that right now and demo it. So basically pressing and holding the noise blanker button brings up this adjustment menu where you can also both adjust the noise blanker level here or use the VFO to adjust it. But you can also, and of course turn on and off the noise blanker, but here you have filter and that's the pre-filter on the um, noise blanker that filters the bandwidth that it sees. Right now it's none, so you're looking at a 24 kilohertz bandwidth, which means nearby signals in that bandwidth may pump the noise blanker. Narrow brings it down so it tracks whatever your receive bandwidth is down to a minimum of one kilohertz. The receiver can, of course, go lower, but the filter won't go any lower than that. So you can narrow it down yourself and actually play with it and see what works for you. And you can also go to wide, which is a fixed five kilohertz setting. So I'll leave it in that position right now. And that's how you access and just tap the noise blanker to go back out of it. Last feature I'd like to talk about now is a really high demand feature for audio recording and then playback off the air. Um, we're adding that hopefully in the R29 release. You'll be able to by uh, pushing and holding the AF record um, button to record off the air. And of course, then you, when you push the AF play button afterwards, it'll bring up a dialog on the screen where you can pick whether you play back the main VFO, the sub VFO, um, and also you can pick which sections of that you want to play back. So hopefully that'll give people a lot more flexibility with the radio to actually either you know hear, hear stuff and replace stuff they were listening to and weren't quite sure if they got your call sign correct, for instance, when you're working at a DX station, or of course, recording your friends off the air and letting them hear how they sound at your end on the, on the circuit. So um, we'll be talk, hopefully getting that out next in R29. We have a bunch of other features coming out to it too that I don't have time to talk about right now. But uh, when we get to the Q&A session afterwards, uh, when you folks uh, join me there, I'll be glad to answer more questions. I'll probably have more features I forgot to talk about now we can talk about and cover anything else you'd like. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for joining me today. And we'll see you next in the Q&A session.